What were the first numbers that were invented? They're called the natural numbers. They were invented by cave natural numbers, start at the end for, etc. What do the three dots mean forever in that direction? Well, what if you have one and you take one away? How much do you then have? Nothing. But there was no symbol to represent zero. So they invented zero numbers. So that came next historically. It just started at zero and then went to one and two and three and four. And after the whole numbers were invented, the concept of money was invented. Debt in symbols. Okay? So what they did was they put a little negative sign, just a little mic, a little dash. Okay, we call it a negative sign in front of the number to indicate debt. So the integers, integers, integers. Now there's no R right there. Okay? It's there. Integers. It's not integers. Now, it's integers. In the set of integers, zero is in the middle. That means you have no money, but you're not in debt. Positive one. We have positive integers that go off in this direction forever. And then we also have <clears throat> the negatives, which go off in this direction forever. Okay? So let me put the dot, dot, dot there. Now, the thing I want to stress to you is there aren't any fractions uh, like 1.5s or 1 and a half or 2.769, nothing like that. It's just the whole numbers and their opposites. We come up with the concept of, okay, well now how do we add these type of walking along? It's on some nice level ground. Okay, there you are. You got some fancy eyebrows on you. And you're walking along. And all of a sudden, it. Now, we're going to call it one full unit. It's black. Actually, this is because it's black is negative one. And this, because it's nice and clear, is black is negative, clear is positive. You with so, me? If I throw this pair into the pit, how much is in the pit right now? In the pit. We're looking at a zero. All right, what if I throw this in the pit? Looks like there's a lot in the pit, right? Negative two, How negative much is three, negative four? There are four negatives. One, two, three, four. There are four positives. Zero so in there, but zero is nothing. So there's nothing in the pit. Okay. All right, so all I want to make sure is you understand that the concept, every time you compare these up, they poof away. To nothing. Let's try and illustrate. All right, so I'm going to take these out. Negative 2 plus negative 2. There's a picture of negative 2 in the pit. And then we're going to throw in three more. One, two, three. Three negatives. Okay, now look in the pit. How much is in the pit at this point? Negative 5. Negative 5, right. So negative 2 plus negative 3 more gives you a total of so negative, negative 5 plus another negative is still negative. You're throwing negatives into the pit. I put in negative 3 and then I add 5 positives. Alright, let's see what this looks like. 1, 2, 3. Okay, I got negative 3 in the pit. Now I got to put in 5 positives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, that is a picture of negative 3 plus positive 5. These guys to go to 0. These guys go to 0. These guys go to 0. Dag, nabbit, schmabbit. Those just all poof away. And you're left with positive. And I'm going to reveal... The pit's fun. But it doesn't take too long before you realize that it won't work too well on harder problems. So we have... The bank money. Bank money. Money. <laughs> it's true. Because when you get money, it's positive. 
When you spend money, it's negative. Or if you are already in debt, go to lunch with a little five buckaroos in her pocket. Y'all with me? Okay. Now, she gets down there, and the meal is going to cost, we're going to keep this really easy, it's going to cost $2. So, am I adding a positive number or a negative number? Negative. I'm going to add a negative. Because it's costing her, it's costing her two bucks. She had five, she's going to spend two on the lunch. Okay, then she's going to eat it and she's not going to be fulfilled. So she's going to go back up and she's going to get one of those little big cookies, you know, those huge cookies. We're going to say they cost a dollar. So she's going to spend another two dollars left. Okay. Now, let's try something a little bit more. Oh, she's still stinking hungry. All right, so she's going to go back up and get fries. How much do the fries cost? I don't know. How much are they? $1.15. All right, well, let us continue on. She's still hungry. She has $2. She's going to spend $1.15. Now, are we still in the integers at this point? No. no. We've moved out of the set of integers, but we can still use our brains. All right. So what's 2 plus a negative 1.15? Think money, and you'll probably be able to do it. Yeah. Come on. Right. So can I write it like that? No. No. What do I have to put in here to make it correct? All right. Can I write it like that? No. All right, I'm going to have to put a point here, and then I'm going to have to remove this because it's not 85 hundredths of a cent. It's 85 hundredths of a dollar, right? So you would have a little dollar sign there. All right, she's now got 85 hundredths of a dollar. The chick is thirsty now. She's stinking thirsty. How much does a water cost? A dollar. A dollar? Okay, so we're going to add a negative. One. All right. She has 85 cents. She's going to get up there. What does the cafeteria lady have on your account? Chelsea. The negative zero point fifteen. Right. You will have negative zero point fifteen, which means negative fifteen cents. Okay? All right, so it's the next day. Right now she's at negative fifteen cents. Okay? The dad gives her 20 bucks. Money is in her account. $19.85. Right. So you can see it is possible to move from the integers into real numbers very, very quickly. And if you think money, you can almost 